Now, here's something, uh, like I told you, I found in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Here's another place in the Bible that said the works of the world are evil. Now, here's somebody that don't like evil. So here's some black men want some jobs, so they want work. And they're over in the church talking about righteousness. They don't get no work because they say the works of the world are evil. And they ascribe that with righteousness. So the man father said, oh, yeah, what church? You notice when you go and look for a job, what church do you belong to? Now, what does that have to do with a man getting a job? It's because whatever church you say you belong to, he's going by that doctrine of that church, and he said, well, yeah, well, can't use him. And they're doing that to you. Then another thing they're doing to black people, they're looking for some jobs. Say, so we want a job, we want some work. And so he go to a place and say, well, I want a job. The man said, we don't have any jobs. I want some work. We don't have any work. And why do they say that? Because white people have started calling jobs this. And you look in the newspaper, and they say, disciplines. Uh, available or something like that. And here you go talking about a job. You're talking about you want some work. And of course these people don't have any. They got disciplines, and that's what they call it. That's one of the keys. So now, since you're talking about freedom and everything, you don't get no disciplines because that's what they, in, like in some of the airplanes, uh, in the top jobs in New York, that's what they got in the, in the water air, disciplines. So now you're going to have to get you some disciplines anyway in order to really get some money. I mean, these are the top paying jobs. They're not going to call it jobs anymore. They're going to call it, the white, the white race is very good at uh, changing words around. And they find something that's very bad, they're not going to say it like that. You see, like the Bible, they changed a lot of things in there because the sound is so bad. Like there's one place in there where it said, God told a man, these people are not doing what I told them to do, so I want you to go out and you show them what I'm going to do to them if they don't do what I tell them to do. So the prophet won't know what it was. He said, go out and take some man's manure and bake it and get in front of the folks and eat it. That's in your good book. But it didn't say that at first. The white race put that there. This is what it said at first. But when they saw the Bible, they said, oh, that's terrible. So then they went and they put it like that. Now, no doubt some black people have seen that, but they don't know what that is. But notice it used the word man in there, too. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so now, uh, I'd like for you to, well, any questions while you write down some questions to possibly uh, I can give you some answers on it. The white race can tell you all about that. They got all the books. They could be very instructed, much more instructed than me, because they got all the books and they think they know, but I'm thinking about the future of black Egypt, which uh, is outside of the realm of history. History has been very unkind to black people. So actually what I'm always talking about is the myth, and nothing that has ever been is part of what I'm talking about, because I'm saying that black folks need a mythocracy instead of a democracy, because they're not going to make it in anything else. They're not going to make it in history. I told you, well, you got here late. But his story is not going to help black folks at all. But that's not, you see, that's what's wrong with y'all. Now, here you walk in, the last man to get in here. And you're going to ask questions. But honesty is not what I'm talking about. You're not in a place where truth can do you any good. So you're going to have to come to me privately. <laughs> and we'll talk about things that can help the black race. Truth has been abolished. So any truth you say is not permissible in here because it's never done anybody any good. Now, I'm dealing with things that can do you some good. If I come across the biggest lie in the universe, if it can help the black race, then I'm going to use it. That's fair warning to anybody, any nation on the face of the earth. I'm going to use anything I find and any weapon that I find. Now, I find that the truth is not permissible for me to use because I'm not righteous and holy. I'm evil. That's because I'm black. And I'm not ascribing to any righteousness. I've never been righteous. I'm never going to be righteous. So now I'm evil. I'm the incarnation of evil. I'm black. I'm following that dictionary. Now I'm dealing with equations. I can't go around and tell you I'm right or good when the dictionary is telling everybody in the world everything black is evil and wicked. So then I come and say, yes. So what? Yes, I'm wicked. Yes, I'm evil. I'm not going to be converted. I'm not going to ascribe to righteousness. I don't want to go to heaven because good folks don't never do nothing but be good and they're always failing and they're always getting killed and they're frustrating. 
So all I see on this planet is something evil like the white man being successful and successful and successful and successful. And I see evil killing black men every day, destroying him. Why should I be good? No, it's better for me to come up to the white race and say, yes, we evil people should sit down and at to the table and talk together. You evil, I'm evil too. Now them other folks that you're dealing with are good black folks. I'm not good and you're not good. We understand one another. Now, a white man told me that in uh, England. He said, well, son, Ron, you know you have no illusions about people. You're just like me. And I had told him in my program, I'm evil. I'm wicked. And I told a Catholic priest that on the radio in New York. I'm evil. And I'm wicked. And not only am I evil and wicked, but because I'm black, every black man is evil and wicked. And I won't recognize none of them that come up talking about good. And I won't recognize none of them talking about truth because I can't use that. It's taboo with the white race. They got everything. They're not going to recognize it. Why should I? I don't need it. They don't need it either. I notice they got everything. And they don't, the creator don't impose this upon them. I mean, he's just. If he gives the white race everything they got with their lies and their evil and their wickedness, it speaks out and says, you do not have to be good for the creator universe to give you things. Now, if black people want wealth. I'm talking about that. I can tell them how to get it. I can make the white race give you anything you want. All you have to do is be evil and wicked like me. <laughs> Now I'm telling you what it's going to have to be. You're going to have to be over in another realm and the dimension of thinking because these people are not playing with you. Anything you come up, anytime you bring up a righteous man, they're going to oppose it. Do you think they're going to let you be righteous and go to heaven and leave them behind? Ain't nothing white good. Everything white is evil and wicked. I ain't never met a good white person, and I never will, because they weren't made good. They were made evil and wicked in imitation of the evil and wicked black man. You don't expect somebody else to come on the planet, the last man to get here, got to learn everything from you. You don't expect them to come along and be good, and you ain't good yourself. I ain't never met nothing black that was good. If they're not doing something bad, they think about it. So now it comes down to a point of being honest with yourself. The truth is that you're just like that dictionary said, evil and wicked. Now all you have to do, since you're up under some evil, wicked people, you just do like Job. That's what he had to do. He had to tell him, well, I spoke a little too hastily. I'm not right. You read your Bible. Job said he was righteous too. And what happened? Satan came, threw some fire on him, took all his wealth away from him, killed his, his sons and his daughters, killed all his cattle and his sheep, took everything away from him, and then put some souls on him, and had the man sitting down in the ashes, and here come his friends, trying to talk to him, and they told him, well, well, don't speak yourself righteous and say that you're righteous. Admit you're wrong that Job wouldn't do it. Then Satan pulled some more foul on him. You read your Bible, finally Job, he said that he spoke a little hastily or something. And then what happened? He got everything that he had back. I mean, he became more wealthy. So now that book is very explicit, telling you, drop your righteousness. Now, I didn't write the book. It's telling you, drop your righteousness and you get anything you want. Now, a person can be evil and not bother anybody. And ain't nobody going to bother them either. If they're evil or nothing. Nobody, I mean, or something. Nobody's going to run out and attack rattlesnakes like that. I mean, a rattlesnake don't have to be doing anything to anybody. And they still see one and they get out the way. A skunk don't have to be doing nothing to anybody either. And they see one and they get out the way. Now, it's amazing where people respect everything in nature but a black man. That's because whatever he got that is natural defense, he's not using it. Now, every black man needs to start finding out what is his natural defense. I'm sure the creator wouldn't give a skunk a natural defense and wouldn't give a black man one. He wouldn't do nothing like that. Now, you've got a natural defense where you can defend yourself against any enemy. So you use it. All you have to do is not to harm and defend yourself by just saying no. And you put it there. Indians used to have it in America. They'd draw a line and could nobody come across it. And Indians had a lot of power. But when they deserted their natural defenses, then the white man took the whole thing. It's only because they deserted their natural defenses. Now here you, they weren't worshiping the wrong thing. Here you had an Indian went out in Florida.
And uh, he did a rain dance. And, you know, Florida having a drought there. This thing did a rain dance, and it rained. Now, the weather bureau doesn't really want to recognize that, but it rained. Furthermore, some more place he went to and did his rain dance. It rained. So then I look like folks that get so intellectual and everything and bypass nature, they're getting left out. But I told you when I first came in this class that if you got in tune with nature, you could get what you want. If a man is pure enough and hard, he get out there and a whole country is suffering and ask for help, he'll get it. But if one get out there who's not sincere in prayer, prayer, of course he's not going to get anything because he don't mean nothing. He might be doing it for fame or doing it for money. But if a man really sincere loved people and wanted to help them and got out there and asked for anything, he'd get it. Of course, finding somebody who really cares about folks is very difficult because everybody wants some money. All the ones who don't want some money, they're trying to get to help them when they die. And they got all kind of different names for their own self or self. But they're going to have to respect the fact that they must start thinking about not independence, but interdependence.